Interesting matchup coming up this weekend at Flyweight. We have the Ukrainian National Boxing Champion, Master of Sport in Boxing, Master of Sport in Kickboxing, and National Champion Boxing Coach Marina the Iron Lady Moroz taking on Maria Agapova. And I look at this fight, there's so many different things to say about this one. For Marina Moroz, it's just unfortunate that we haven't been able to see her fight all that often. I mean, you look at her fit the last fight, it was five years and a number of I'm months sorry. I'm just ago. imagining you telling your wife, I can't go out tonight, Marina Moroz is about to fight. And I will say, you know, we're keeping it light this week, we're having fun, but for Marina Moroz, this has to be the toughest thing she's ever it done in her life. I mean, her Instagram game from the last couple of weeks like oh look at marina rose like she's bodied up she's in fight shape she looks amazing to now you have to take a whole 180 and take the focus off of fighting so it really is scary obviously our hearts are with morose okay, and, and the people that are in ukraine right now it's awful to see but she has a fight coming up this weekend that's no easy test i mean these are complete polar opposites of fighters. I think we can say that, Matt, right? Without a doubt. Like, you look at it for Marina Moroz, it really is that boxing, kickboxing, heavy game. And there's not a lot of kicks as there are punches. And when you look at Moroz, 31% accuracy throughout her UFC career. And it's kind of crazy because she's just 30. Like, you're just coming into your athletic prime. She's been in the UFC forever she came in undefeated she fought joanne calderwood at strawweight beat her by armbar which was how she was winning all her fights in the regional scene it's like wow look at this striker who submits everybody that's kind of crazy you don't see that every day and then it's been a bit of a rocky ride since again i've talked about it she's been booked in fights she's lost fights fallen out of fights so on and so forth but again her last fight was against maeda buena silva where she won by decision because it was the volume of Moroz to the power punching of Maeda Buena Silva, who did not try and take that fight to the mat, which was a little bit of a surprise. Then she was booked in fights against Montana De La Rosa in 2020, against Tyler Santos in 2020, Manon Fioro this year, or sorry, last year, Luana Carolina last year. All of those fights, with I believe the exception of one, uh, Moroz withdrew from. No, actually, Tapology says she withdrew from all of them. So she has this fight against Agapova coming up this weekend. But again, Matt, for Marina Moroz, tons and tons of volume, a lot of early armbar finishes, but I definitely don't expect her to get a submission finish in this one. Looking at Moroz's numbers is kind of like going back and looking at players in the NBA from the 1960s numbers and just how bad their field goal percentage was. Like, Bob Cousy's one of the all-time great players, but he shot like 30% from the floor. It just shows you how far the sport has evolved, but for Moroz, yes, she has volume, but it's weird. She throws a lot of volume. Does she land a lot of volume? Not at all. And that's the weird thing about a Moreau's fight. It's, it really tells you who's a good judge in the sport and who isn't a good judge. Because if you just look at what she's doing and you listen to the noises, you're thinking, wow, she must be landing like Max Holloway level strikes. Yeah, it's like Serena Williams level of volume. But the thing with Moreau's is that she's never really able to land a lot of those strikes together. And she throws in combination, but doesn't land in combination. That's a really frustrating thing to see when you watch someone like Moreau's. And it's weird because, again, this is one of those stack up all their skills next to each other. Who's the more skilled fighter? Moreau's probably has more skills. Like you said, she is a very good submission fighter off her back. She's shown that at the UFC level. She has... I would say technically sound stand-up. I think that's a good way of describing it. But for Agapova, a much better finisher, especially in the MMA world. Because, again, when you just talk about MMA skill sets, I would say Moroz is the more skilled fighter. She has the much higher level of credentials. But for Agapova, odd knockout power for this division. I would say she has decent power. She has good hands, really good kicks. And everything she does, she throws a lot behind it. But the problem with that kind of a style is that you will tire out throughout your fights. And that's something you always have to worry about with Agapova. Because if you get TKO'd by Shayna Dobson, shout out to Dobson, I really do worry about you just as an overall prospect throughout the UFC. Because we often talk about how this is a good uh, fighter for someone to be fighting on their way throughout or up the ranks. And this is a bad fighter for someone to be fighting. Shayna Dobson's one of those, oh, that's kind of a guaranteed win, let's build them up a little bit. Agapova looked terrible in that fight, and ever since, it really throws up a lot of red flags moving forward. She had a good first round, she had an awful second round, but again, when I look at this fight for Agapova, she came out her last time and proved that to be 
a bit of a blip on the radar. I don't know what the bigger upset is. Was it Juliana Pena, Amanda Nunes? Was it Shayna Dobson against Maria Agapova? But if you look at it for Agapova last time out, you take on a volume striker in Sabina Mazo, somebody who's big for the division, long, so to speak, and you submit her in the third round. I do like the improvements that I did see there. And for Agapova, it was weird, right? She used to train at Big ATT. Then she was training, it seemed, with Jillian Robertson off to the side. Now it seems, you know, ATT Sunrise is the play for Kazakhstan's Maria Agapova. But again, I want to go back to Moroz because, again, a really good jab. She likes to throw in the body work, too. You like to see that, especially from, you know, a boxer in MMA. It's not something that you do see every day. It's just point fighting, though, which is the frustrating thing. That's the toughest thing. And again, for Marina Moroz, you look at it, the takedown defense, it's not that great. But the last couple of opponents, uh, again... For Maeda Buena Silva, for Sabina Mazza, it's not like they're forcing a lot of takedowns in those fights. For Maria Gapova, when you look at Agapova during fight week, she gives me the oddest vibe check I think there is out there in this entire world. I can't tell if it's heads or tails. I don't know if there's like this weird cockiness that could end up costing her against somebody like Shayna Dobson, or if she comes out on the winning end and it looks amazing and it's a lot of fun. So here's my comp for Maria Agapova. I've got a bit of a prop for this one, and I think the people will enjoy it. It's like the record Lazaretto by Jack White. People might say, well, Craig, what? What are we doing? Yeah, Born Rotten. Great song. Uh, There's two hidden tracks on this one underneath the label in the vinyl. Don't know if people knew that one. Side A plays from the middle to the outside. Like, you can put the needle on... What does this have to do with You can put the needle on one of the songs. It plays in acoustic or electric. It is an enigma. Oh, by the way, there's also one song that plays in 78, one song that plays in 45, and the rest of the album plays in 33. So it really is just a weird cosmic gumbo of a mix, and that's what I get over Fight Week from Rhea Agapova. It's a lot of trash talk it's a lot of bad blood and then when she goes in there to fight she can throw so many different things at you like there's even hand etched holograms Just in the middle of that please record. never quit your job to become a prop comedian it's, Craig, it for is the love of god it is the craziest thing that you will see fight week is maria agapova so again when you look at this fight agapova definitely the you know she's the harder hitting striker we know this she's the more aggressive uh grappler but sometimes these things can bite her like the album a lazaretto sometimes it just gets forgotten so when i look at the odds for this one we talked about it i mean agapova open to minus 200 favorite she's minus 215 right now moreau's open to plus 170 around a plus 175 if we're looking at the topology votes surprise to us there to you i'm gonna say over under 60 percent agapova i'll say under you're gonna say under Way 624 total votes, 82% Agapova, 64% by decision. For the 18% that I'm Moroz, 83% by decision. So Matt, Marina Moroz will most likely win a decision if she's able to get the win. It's just, again, what do you value? Volume, power. Last weekend, Cachuera able to win out with the power to the volume of Ji Young Kim. But I don't know MMA judging anymore, so I don't know... How you can look at this one that way. It comes down to the willingness of Agapova to actually get into the pocket and take a few shots before she can land one of her own. Because for Morose, it's just a wall of light punches in the air. That's really all it is. And if you can get past that wall, you can't have success. It's just a lot to deal with early on. That's why Morose is a really good litmus test for uh, anyone just coming up the ranks. Because... It just offers a very clear roadblock to where, okay, if you can get past this, then you will have an obvious win. And if you can't, you will probably lose a one-sided decision. That won't be a fun fight to watch at all. Now, I do think Morose is a really good opportunity to get the win as the underdog in this matchup. It has been a long time since we have seen her in the cage, and that does worry me a little bit. But I do think I'm going to side with the underdog in Morose. I think her takedown defense is going to be sound enough to where if Agapova decides to start grappling, her takedown attempts are going to be from far enough away to where Morose will be able to defend them. And I do think that initial wall of punches will be enough to keep Maria off of her and to at least keep her at the outset of her reach. And that's why I like Morose in this matchup. But Agapova could get this to the ground really quick and look great and i wouldn't really have an argument against that i don't necessarily love the takedown defense that i've seen out of morose and again in her last two wins at flyweight up a weight class from where she used to be the fighters haven't tried to take her down it might have been a silva almost looked like you know cocky in the fact that she had the power and she was just willing to stand there 
wait for those flurries, and then on the reset, she'd try and land her own heavy shots. And those fights, again, for the judges, it really is tough. What do you value? And again, you look at it for Sabina Mazow, somebody who's lost to both of these fighters somewhat recently, and Alexis Davis recently. See you later from the UFC. Just a shame to see that one. But for me, I do like Agapova in this fight because I think... When it comes to controlling the distance, Moroz is great with that volume. Agapova is really good at really crashing that distance, really getting the fight down to the map. But again, when you're taking on such a technical striker in Marina Moroz, it's easier said than done, and we've seen crazier things happen. So I have Maria Agapova in this fight. Matt going with Marina Moroz out of Ukraine. It should be a big-time fight in this flyweight division that's pretty well wide open at this point. Can't wait for it. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have, and keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks, as we always say. Let's, let's get, get into it. it.